Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, it's gonna be a brave noob world uh, sent to Sniper Monkey at the email address in the description. Thank you again, Sniper Monkey, for screening these. I really appreciate it. He didn't give her very many the last couple of weeks. So again, if you want me to cast your Brave Noob World game, make sure it is silver or bronze, and make sure it's kind of interesting, and then send it to Sniper Monkey with the subject of Brave Noob World, okay? Alright, so bottom right here, we have a red Protoss player, Rocket Raccoon, and in the top left, it is a blue Terran player, Curdle Panic. Oh, little Starcrafts Marine up there spinning around. I like Starcrafts a lot. Ah, Carbot. Great guy. Great guy Carbot is. I like his videos. Doing some Diablo stuff right now. I actually have just put out a Zerg video, too. How to Zerg, I believe. Which you might find interesting. Anyway, yeah. If you haven't checked out Carbot in a while, I would recommend it. He's not paying me to say that. Maybe he should. <laughs> Alright, so this is a Silver League game based on the loading portraits in the loading screen. APMs are pretty low, which just means nobody's spamming. Right? Like, a professional could have a super low APM in the first two minutes of the game and then just, poof, just launch it into the stratosphere when things actually mattered and it would be fine. But, uh, I don't think we're going to see that here, is what I'm trying to say. All right, what are we doing here for Colonel Panic? Well, not panicking, so that's good. Sometimes a probe comes into a Terran base and all the SCVs go, Panic! Get him! And they all come off the mineral line and then they lose the game. Because that's horrible. Don't ever do that. Back home. Double Gateway Ford Cybercore. That's not a build. All right, Rocket Raccoon. Maybe a little bit new to Protoss or new to the game in general. Uh, Making Zealots early game versus Terran is also extraordinarily bad. Your first unit versus a Terran really needs to be an Adept or a Stalker because usually... A Reaper is going to show up and try to murder you. Look at the shiny lights on this barracks. I'm so distracted by that. Additionally, Colonel Panic needs to be building something. That's not happening. That's bad. Really bad news bears. But the Zealot is able to save the probe from certain death from that SCV. Which is exactly what we're looking for. And, ooh. So what? Why? Por qué? Why Supply Depot? I guess to prevent sneaky ninja bases. And, oh, is that a Total Biscuit top hat on that? Oh, it is. Oh, he's got a Total Biscuit logo. Oh, I miss Total Biscuit. Ah, now I'm sad. We've lost too many great StarCraft personalities in the last few years, haven't we? Blah, okay. We're gonna focus. So again, traditionally, making Zealots versus Terran is bad. Really bad, but if your Terran opponent is not actually making much of anything, you can overwhelm him with Zealots because making stuff is better than not making stuff in lower league games. So let's see how this works. Uh, we're making Zealots normal way. We're not getting warp gate research at all. Got a bunch of gas, which we're using for nothing at the moment. It's probes, cannons, and Zealots in production, which that's not gas use whatsoever. But honestly, though, you can you can make warp gate. It's a it's such a good upgrade. It allows you to warp in units from these gateways instead of waiting them build super slow. Okay, well uh, we can do that next time. Marine production happening off of a one barracks play. Ooh, hang on, we got two more barracks now from Colonel Panic. Things are looking up for Colonel Panic here. It's getting plus one attack. I love upgrades in lower level games, especially. This feels like they're so much better. See, there's a forge, but it's entirely for cannons. This is not intended to be for upgrades at all. I feel like for Rocket Raccoon, he's not thinking about it. He's not planning on it, which could be a problem for him. Rocket Raccoon's going to, I don't know, expand? Sure, why not? Ooh, I love the reactors here, too. Yeah, because he's queuing up Marines on a tech lab barracks, which means he can only make one Marine at a time. But if you have the reactor rod on, you can make two at a time. Yes! Colonel Panic doing some good things here. Th uh, second CC, rather. It's traditionally a third CC location. But Colonel Panic is worried about stuff wandering down here and killing the command center while he builds it on the low ground. So, yeah. So, pro tip, if you're planning... Well, if you do this, right? If you build a bunch of barracks before your second base, you need to attack with it. 
you need to attack with it. Same thing here for Rocket Raccoon. If you're going to make a couple of gateways and make a bunch of zealots before you expand, you need to attack with it. That's just how the game works, right? If your opponent, they're both worried about being attacked, so they're both sitting at home with units to defend against the attack. Uh, psyching each other out. That is kind of what Brave New World is all about sometimes, is being afraid to go. Ooh, expanding though. Rocket Raccoon, not too afraid to expand. I like that. And Colonel Panic either needs to float this down here right now, or upgrade it to an orbital, and then float it down. And that's where we're going. We're upgrading to an orbital, and then going for the old float-on down our Rooney. Plus one attack on the way from Rocket Raccoon. Uh, additional gateways. I like that. If you're starting to float a little bit of money, make additional gateways, which Rocket Raccoon is not so much. It's about 300 minerals in the bank, which is not a giant unused bank of money that's causing you problems. I don't know how I feel about this all-marine, all-the-time strategy from Colonel Panic. It seems bad. Especially if these zealots end up getting charged, which is going to make them about 50% better than they were before they had charge. <gasps> he's get Oh, he's getting he's getting upgrades now. I Rocket Raccoon, I unfairly maligned you. You're not getting Warp Gate, because maybe you're Florencio. But you are getting... Wow, Blink too. So charge and Blink and plus one attack. Okay, so if a bunch of charge lots showed up right now, these marines would die. The good news is, charge is not done yet. Uh, what do you think? Five charge lots versus... This has got to actually getting a little bit ridiculous on marine count. So maybe five charge lots couldn't take this many dudes down. But maybe a, f a smaller number, right? They got plus one. They got combat shield, extra HP. Being all beefy there. Like the factory from Colonel Panic. Never going to say no to a factory in a PVT. What are you going to do with it? Siege tanks? You're going to make cyclones? You're going to use it to make a starport and make, I don't know, banshees or battle cruisers? That'd be pretty cool stuff. Again, stalkers are a great answer to all of those things. <laughs> so, you don't see a lot of battle cruisers versus Protoss in general. If you're going to do it, it requires a lot of control. Unlike if you're making battle cruisers versus Zerg at this level where it doesn't take any control at all generally. So, good unit. The heck is oh the shinies man? Getting distracted by the shiny antennas on these Terran buildings. They're nice. I like I like the shade of blue and I like that they're blinking at me. All right, well army supply is 34 to 23. Rocket Raccoon's been dropped before. That's what this stalker defensive posture means. Is he's been dropped before? He would not like that to happen again. So he's just going to make all the stalkers live by this base. So that dropping and dying never happens. Rocket Raccoon made the extra gateways, hasn't done anything with them. So it was a good plan, but follow through needs to happen as well. Floating about a thousand minerals is not looking great. Stargate's coming in. Interesting stuff. Colonel Panic decides, well, I've, uh, I've got the plus one, plus one, and combat shield and stim. So here we, uh, this is our, this is our situation. Charge lots versus Marines with upgrades, no micro by anyone, and the Marines win. All right, I was right about that. The Stalkers come down, and they should be able to win just by sheer numbers. Usually, Marines are pretty good against Stalkers, uh, cost for cost, but that was a shellacking because there were just so many more Stalkers than Marines there. Not gonna work out, it is Banshees, and it is Cyclones out of Colonel Panic. Okay, all right, I'm down. Stargates, what are we doing with these? Void Rays would be fun. Although pretty bad against someone who's going for a whole bunch of Marines, which is, you know, what this looks like right now. Uh, again, uh, Rocket Raccoon seems to be... Okay, so he is making more Stalkers, again. Sometimes building production facilities and then not doing anything with them is considered rough. Uh, saturating that second gas at the natural base would be cool. Fully saturated on these assimilators is nice. Terran's got all of his refineries saturated. Beautiful stuff here. <gasps> oh, it's an armory. I thought it was a fusion core. I was excited for a minute. Oh my gosh, he's making a raven. We don't see a lot of spellcasters in Brave New World. We're making a raven. We're getting high sec auto tracking for range upgrade for planetary fortresses that don't exist yet. And turrets that do exist yet. This is a pretty dope design for a turret too. I like it. I like it a lot. Is that a third? Third base. It's on the way from Rocket Raccoon. He's like, alright, so my opponent's not killing me. And I held that attack, and I feel pretty confident about it. 
It is Void Rays, by the way. Then we can hold this third base. Let's do it. Let's make sure we have our Stalker Army, our undefeatable Stalker Army here. I don't think it's really undefeatable right now. You know how this works. Ooh, Widow Mines. I, I mean, Widow Mines are good at the pro level, which means they're extra good at the lower leagues. That is a weird place to burrow your Widow Mines, Colonel Panic. I'm just saying, odd place for that. Hmm. So Void Ray's out. Let's see what that Marine count is, shall we? 24. Yikes. 24 Marines can kill two Void Rays really easily. Uh, the good news today for Rocket Raccoon is that there are no Medivacs. Apparently Colonel Panic does not believe in the saving power of Medivacs, if you're making a bunch of Marines. <gasps> Wait, no, he's got them. They're queued up, though. He's making Vikings first, and then medevacs are a secondary priority here, which I don't agree with at all. Although, Vikings can do pretty well against Void Rays if they can keep their distance, which is hard to do because Vikings are fast. Which, not always, that did not always used to be the case. If you remember, <sighs> what is proving to be maybe the final balance patch of StarCraft II ever. Whoever was in charge of the balance machine was like, Void Rays need to be good. We made them cheaper, they build faster, they have better acceleration, and they uh, move faster. That was, uh... Hmm. It was a choice. Now we see Void Rays way, way more than we did before, which makes a lot of sense. Fleet Beacon coming in. Maybe some carrier production here. We're gonna go Sky Toss against Colonel Panic. Colonel Panic's getting a third base, too. So these players have a pretty good handle on expanding and building stuff. Production tabs looked pretty healthy for Colonel Panic for most of this game, I feel like. Once again, moving out with an entirely... No, you're making medevacs, though. There's one right there. Oh, there are two of them. Send... Oh, my gosh. No. Oh, send the medevacs out with these marines. Heal them as they do damage to the enemy. Forsooth. They need it. All right. Well, here they are. And, um, are they going to stim at all? You know, he's got stim research, but he's not stimming at all, which is a huge problem. And everybody dies, largely because if you show up here and stim and have medevac supporting you, you're going to do a little bit better. But no, we're just, it's a lot of stalkers, and it's a bunch of voiders. Look how fast they are. Flux Veins isn't even done yet. Not even done yet. I want to see if we can, like, catch the movement speed change as they're moving. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Move this way, move this way. Flux Veins is done. And now... <laughs> Whee! Army supply, 84 to 58. Traditionally, Rocket Raccoon, I would recommend you get splash damage against a Terran player that's making this much bio. But, considering that Colonel Panic does not believe in using the stem that he's researched... He doesn't have a lot of Marines left over after that massacre. You don't probably need splash damage to win this game. Void Rays and Stalkers, a weird, bad composition at pro level, might just work here. I wouldn't be surprised by it. Again, the reason why is just sheer outnumbering. There are a lot of compositions that you can use to win a game of StarCraft if you just outnumber the opponent 2-1. to one. That's it. That's how this works. It's a lot of Void Rays, man. He's getting Tectonic Destabilizers for the Zero Tempest that are in production right now. Like, Stalkers are fast, but look at these Void Rays are so much faster. They have little contrails, air, air trails coming off the back there. Whee! They're so fast. All right, man, it's 162 to 128 supply. It is looking... Fairly dire for Colonel Panic right now. He's getting transformation servos, which allows nothing he has to transform faster, actually. Okay, well, here comes nothing. Void Rays versus Marines is not generally a great fight, but again, it's kind of working out here. Stalker's doing all right for themselves. Planetary Fortress firing away on these Stalkers here, too. The repair on the Planetary is incredible. Rocket is... Again, no splash damage at all right now. Oh, look at him repairing the turret so it never dies. But that means they leave the planetary 
Explode. Now they're back to the planetary because they realize that's what they need to kill now. Colonel Panic's repair priority is actually pretty good right now. All the Void Rays are dead, so the Missile Turret's not important anymore. The Stalkers are alive, so, uh... You gotta repair the planetary, which is racking up kills. That's the tenth kill on that planetary fortress. And Colonel Panic actually doing pretty great here. Again, Rocket Raccoon didn't bring any splash damage at all to this fight, and the Void Rays are probably gonna wipe out the planetary eventually. They haven't really focused on it today, they're trying to kill SCVs. Which, SCV repair can actually out-repair Void Ray damage. Oh, Thors are up. Thor prismatic Alignment! Okay, Rocket Raccoon might not know what Prismatic Alignment is, which... Well, it upgrades damage done to armor targets. Dude, this planetary though. 18 kills. Mm, and Rocket Raccoon is just continuing to throw Void Rays into this. So I don't know, Colonel Panic, despite the fact I really don't like what he's doing, that was some pretty clutch defense. The SCVs repairing did amazing work for him there. He got Thors out, which did fairly well in that situation. He saved the base, he lost a bunch of SCVs, 10 of them, and 71 Marines have now died, And but it's 13,000 resources lost for Rocket Raccoon and 7,000 lost for Colonel Panic. It's 17 Void Rays and 37 Stalkers, and this planetary has 20 total kills. That's awesome. So Rocket Raccoon, let's see, can he brute force his way to victory using units that are bad against this Terran composition like Void Rays and Stalkers? Or do we see some Colossus join the party? Maybe some Immortals to deal with the, the Thor a little bit? Immortals to deal with the Planetary? If you have like four or five Immortals and they're all just hammering the Planetary, Repair has a really hard time keeping up with that. Immortal damage is crazy versus Armor Targets. And they hit pretty fast too. So, Rocket is making Tempests. So the Tectonic Destabilizer's upgrade was not entirely useless, which is always nice. Getting Blue Flame. Colonel Panic is sort of doing a bit of a hybrid mech bio situation. Making Hellbats, Marmirians, Marauders, Thors, Vikings. It's a weird setup. But again, in Brave Noob World, weird setups are sometimes just fine. They can totally work. Doesn't make sense, I know. These Widow Mines have zero kills by the way, because nothing comes by here. Oh, hang on, look what's coming by here. Oh, look! Look! Ah, oh, the Widow Mine's got a kill. Do they have drilling claws? They certainly don't, so they are visible. And therefore, they're dead. Wait, the Void Rays are not? Wait, hold on. Was your base burning to the ground part of the plan? Oh, it's even the Total Biscuit voice pack. That makes a lot of sense. He does have... Oh, there... Wait. Armory. That's what it is. He has the armory, so they're invisible. That's... There you go. Drilling Claw just makes them burrow faster. I always forget they changed how that upgrade worked in that final patch. All right. So, still here. Rocket Raccoon has no idea what happened. It's not great for him. He's working on upgrades. He's getting... Ooh, three robotics facilities. And Colonel Panic... Uh, it's a weird comp. It's a lot of Marines, a couple Hellbats with Blue Flame, a tank, two Thors, a couple Vikings, and one Medivac. This is not a recommended composition for pretty much anything, but you know it's 92 to 66 army supply. And you know these Void Rays are going to stink against this. So, alright, Rocket Raccoon's attempt at taking a fifth base is going to end in shambles here. Oh my gosh, he's getting stimmed. He just stimmed everybody. So Nexus down. Medivac doing some healing. Marauder doing a lot of work on the back lines here. Both Marauders actually doing a ton of work. The Thor's in single target mode, wiping out the Tempests. Turtle Panic doing some work there. Is he producing back home? He's making more Marines. He's bringing them, bringing them along. He's making another Thor. Uh, Zealots. I kind of like this, actually. Charge Lots versus Tanks and Thors. Not bad. Blue Flame Hellbat dies pretty quickly to these guys. There were a bunch of them that could have been better. You know what? 
Uh, Thor's doing better in that situation than I expected. Marines getting on up. Thor down. Ah, uh, Thor needs to focus down the Tempest. Oh my gosh. Look at how much damage Thor's do to Tempests. I mean, they do a ton of damage to any flying massive unit. Tempest, carriers, battle cruisers, brood lords, right? Look at this. Thor down. It is a scrappy attack right now. But by golly, is it working for Colonel Panic? No, the other Thor is not in the right attack mode. Oh no! And the Zealots come in to try to clean it up. But again, the Blue Flame Hellbat back here has got 10 kills. Oh, he's finally dead. But reinforcements, Colonel Panic, very importantly. Not forgetting the part of the game where you got to make stuff back at home and continue to reinforce your attack. Stargate dies. Tempest in production there. I don't know the Tempest or what you want anyway. Zealots actually doing a surprisingly great job for themselves here. But not enough to win that. Apparently, attacking these Stargates is all that really matters to Colonel Panic right now. He feels like killing those is how he wins this game. He's scanning. Thor dies. And, okay, Rocket Raccoon cleans it up. That said, there is a Banshee here. And it is getting free reign on all the Zealots and the Immortals you're making. So that's not perfectly ideal. Also, Marines versus Immortals is not great for the Immortal, it turns out. Uh, zealots do save his butt. But yeah, Banshee causing some problems. Marines kind of trickling down across the map here from Colonel Panic. It's 73 to 36 or army supply right now. Banshee's going to get a Thor, or uh, an Immortal though. Ooh, speaking of Thors though. Wow. Oh boy. Immortal Zealot versus Thor? Uh-uh. Not entirely fair. Stalker's coming to finally clear out the Banshee. Colonel Panic is not macroing like a god necessarily, but he's macroing well enough to win a Brave New World game. Is he going to be able to do it is the question. Immortal down. God, these Void Rays die so, so, so quick to these Marines. As do Immortals generally, but... Out of energy medevac, that totally sucks. We're still making Vikings for, I guess, uh, <sighs> Void Ray reasons, I suppose. Thor down, but Immortal down. This is a scrappy engagement coming in here. Thor getting probes would be better than trying to take down this Nexus, I think. Colonel Panic, long distance mining. He doesn't quite have enough to expand up there, but he should fairly soon. In production, a couple zealots. We still don't... Oh, we have Warp Gate. We finally got Warp Gate, everybody. Congratulations, us. The good news for Rocket Raccoon is that he has the sneaky base down here that Colonel Panic doesn't know exists. Uh, zealots also very good against Thors. But not good enough that two zealots can kill a Thor. That's ridiculous. I like how Zerglings are good against Thors, but like, four Zerglings are not going to kill a Thor because that's stupid. I like how he has these medevacs here and absolutely nothing for them to do. I guess they could lift Thor into the main base and cause problems that way, but it is snowballing hard right now. Rocket Raccoons at 200 minerals. 1700 gas. He has Sneaky Ninja base. He's expanding to the bottom left for a more Sneaky Ninja base. Is it going to be enough? I don't know, man. Are you scanning these areas? Colonel Panic, you have scans available. I guarantee you do. Yeah, you're on max energy on both of the orbital commands. So, pro tip. If you feel like you have a game one, just if you're Terran especially, you feel like you have the energy to spare, throw down a few scans at bases around the map. See if maybe there's something you're not aware of. Because I don't think it matters in this game. I'm pretty sure Rocket Raccoon is dead. But, uh... You know, sneaky bases have allowed players to win games that they should have lost, right? He's still making these Blue Flame Hellions, man. What an interesting... A very interesting comp here. And bam, Colonel Panic's your winner. Rocket Raccoon is defeated here in 24 minutes. So nicely done by Colonel Panic. I thought for a second there, Rocket Raccoon would have enough of a non-traditional army to beat Colonel Panic, but his ability to repair the planetary, allow it to get 20 kills, repair the missile turret to make sure all the void rays died, 
and then let the planetary wipe out the remaining stalkers, that really turned the tide in this game. I, I mean, I feel like it would have been a lot better for Rocket Raccoon to attack into this space where there wasn't a planetary. Maybe kill all this stuff, maybe get into the main, rather than going at a third base with stalkers against a planetary that's being repaired exceptionally well. But, you know, it's just, it's a question of game sense, question of making decisions. It's hard. It's a hard game, that's for sure. But nice job, Colonel Panic. Just holding as well as he could there, and the Thors paying for themselves immensely, I think, especially against the Tempest that Rocket Raccoon was making and against the Void Rays, too. That single-target anti-air attack is really big and hefty, especially good, again, against things like Tempests. So, nice job making the Thors. The Marines paid for themselves effectively well. I am shocked we didn't get more Metavacs in this game. We have two and we lost three. So five medivacs in 24 minutes is probably not enough, considering you produced 180 marines. So that'd be a pro tip, is uh, more medivacs, Colonel Panic. But uh, other than that, I kind of like it. Kind of like what you did there. But that's going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a Brave Noob World. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.